Start streaming. My sanity. Apparently, I'm not as you should be able to see all the chat when the thing kicks in. Well, then try harder. Yeah, I've just gone to YouTube and... We're live now. There cool. you go. Alright. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, well, you can see the chat, can't you? Can you see the chat? Yep. Alright, cool. Yep, yep. You can die on your phone or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I've professional. Tab. It's the it's the most professional way to do these things. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, let's kick off the live stream. Hey, live stream. Hello. Another um, live stream. Hurrah. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, no, I've just got to nip off for like ten minutes, so I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. You go forage for berries, man. I shall, uh, oh, I shall pick I this up. Some, I need some berries. Right, so this is this is an addendum to the the first look video I did, and as I said in the in the comments, that first look video was literally I've read nothing about the Sister of the Thorn, nothing. I bought it and jumped straight into a game, and I wanted to do a completely blind sergeant. first look. But us. as I've got as Don't I was looking through the, the comments and stuff and people asking questions, it's like okay, we shall um, have a look at some stuff. I am having to get Ugg to uh, live stream this from his oh, side, worse than him. as my, my live stream just didn't want to work this evening for some reason, so it's, it's a bit of a rigmarole, but anyway, <laughs> it's fine. You had it in you, okay, so we'll go through, just we'll read through some of the stuff, shall we? Okay. Thornwake, cruelly encounters a thorn wall that hinders enemy movement. The thorn wall lasts six seconds. Uh, the default thorn wall direction is horizontal. You can change its direction to a vertical by holding the crystal F. So you can hold it down and then left click to change whether you want it horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Uh, enemies can't pass through the wall. They either have to change the direction or break through the wall. So they will stand there. If you can find a choke point, you can stand there and block them off. But they will try and get around it or just break through it. Uh, it also blocks ranged attacks from rattling gunners and ungor archers, which is really, really, really useful. Uh, players can walk through the wall, but your movement speed is reduced. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, the wall also blocks your melee and ranged attacks, so you can't snipe through it. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Uh, right, so her passive. Krillin is granted Radiance, a free use of a career skill every 60 seconds. When using a career skill with both base... When using a career skill with both base skill recharge and Radiance ready, Krillin will consume your natural recharge career ability first, and then the Radiance charge. So, something to keep in mind there, guys. So, that's just her main passives and abilities. And we shall have a quick look. Oh, I'll stand in front of us. There's something more more fancy to look at. We'll have a quick look at the javelin again, because uh, in my first video, I got a few things wrong about it. So I would like to rectify them. The javelin actually recharges, which makes it just fucking really good. So we'll go down uh, the, the basics, like the nitty gritty of it so dodge is 120 percent dodge distance and a six dodge count uh armor piercing is it pierces super armor with all of it, all attacks uh no extra crit chance and no mass modifiers uh only melee attacks can trigger the level five and 15 talents and only range attacks can trigger traits uh the last light melee attack does apply a bleed the bleed lasts for four seconds but does not stack has a base tick rate of about 0 0.5. Uh, can't be picked up like the throwing axes, though. So, Carillion, As I said. What, so, uh, I was right on one thing there. Will you not leave it well alone, me? Uh, it Sorry, is infinite ammo, mid-range oh, sniping weapon, dead. which and compensates for her you know, lack of her melee she was. DPS. The range part is similar to the throwing axe. It has infinite ammo. It does recharge, which... At the time of making the first video, I did not know. I assumed it was like throwing axe, but it's not. It does recharge. Uh, it has really good cleave and stagger. It can stagger Chaos Warriors with an overhead on Cataclysm. It's really nice. 
Uh, what else? And it's very similar to the Elven Spear Poke Attack. The light chain has one of the is one of the best sort of monster DPS and unarmed elite DPS in the game. It's, it's it's a beast of a weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing does not get nerfed pretty quick. Um, and the headshot crit rate is pretty good. You just gotta you know aim for it. So you'd want a pair of a melee weapon that can clear hordes and kill armors pretty decently. So glaive, maybe sword and dagger. I wouldn't go dual daggers. It's a bit too risky for me, but you can. You uh, you were talking about Isha. And obviously you can't no, block with it. You were talking so, about Isha. I was casually deflecting. Obviously. Oh. So you can charge it up and throw. What she was. But there is no block. There's just lots of poking. Oh, much clearer. Thanks. Uber poking. So yeah, but um, I did not know it had a natural regenerate to it, which is just really cool. So the let's test out the briar wall or the thorn wall, whatever it is. So that goes up. Oh yeah, and it stops it. Yeah, so that definitely, you can't shoot through it. Always good to know. And let's have another quick look. Do -do 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 -do. Right, let's have, a look, let's have a quick look at the overview of the Deepwood Staff. So it's only accessible to the Sister of the Thorn. It has 100% dodge distance and two dodge count. Uh, armor piercing pierces normal armor, does not pierce super armor without headshots or crits. There's no extra crit chance to it, and there is no mass modifier. Has no overheat slowdown. Overheat explosion deals 40% of your maximum health. Then the Deepwood Staff starts calling it automatically, but it will lock you out of using the staff until it hits the grey portion. Uh, primary attack releases four hit scan darts with low or zero damage drop off. Alternative fire attack lifts and disables enemies you select for eight seconds. All enemies that are not monsters can be lifted and disabled. So basically, anything that is not a monster or a boss can be disabled, which is just really nice and hilarious. Uh, during the lift duration, the enemy cannot move or attack, but they do not gain stagger state. Okay. So you can't, okay, so you can't um, chuck loads of stagger attacks on them, fair enough. During the lift duration, if the enemy has a shield, the shield will drop automatically. Pretty cool. Uh, the staff can be treated as a shield weapon in range form. Its primary attack has a decent fire rate and an and unarmored damage. Uh, so it's pretty good for just getting rid of roaming enemies and specials and elites quickly. But it struggles really, really, really difficult, uh, really hard against armored enemies. So for that, you'd want to use the lift to just chuck them in the air and let your team deal with them. Uh, you can only select and disable select and disable one unit per cast but the disabled lasts for eight seconds and actually has no max target limit so in those eight seconds between the first cast you can disable as many people as you can physically click so that's pretty good to know and it's just it's really really good for bringing down rattling gunners and anything that's in a dodgy position that people can't get to so you can just say you know press f to say how about no and it also makes fighting patrols and elites inside hordes um, a lot smoother because you can just pick them off. So you you won't be spending a lot of time damaging stuff. You'll be spending a lot of your time uh, crowd controlling. So this is very much a support a support role, which is nice. It's you know it's about time it wasn't all just clamoring for who can do the most damage. I think this is going to be a very very interesting career to play with. So, the Deepwood Staff, I think, is going to be my favourite choice over the Javelin. Although I may try the Javelin out on the Last Shade, seen many elves just for the laughs. Shut up, Kruber. No one's asking you. Anyway. And am I not marching but yeah, it's, um, I, also, I just wanted to chuck out some actual facts well, compared to my video of fashioned. just me laughing In and clapping my hands. Just, that's all it was. Efficient. It was a first look. Now, what's that supposed to mean? 
So no, yeah, just forget uh, hopefully I will have a proper build, like with breakpoints and stuff, soon. But for the moment, I just wanted to clear up some of the, you know, what the weapons actually do. Uh, we can have another, we can go over the talents as well. Okay. So the level uh, level five row. Weave bound. Melee critical strikes and headshots restore two temporary health. Critical headshots restore twice as much. Should be used if you have consistent headshot rate or using a high crit chance fast attack speed weapon. So daggers. Uh, melee healing blows restore temporary health based on the health of the enemy slain. Should be used if your melee weapon has strong elite killing power. Glaive. Maybe spear. And eternal blossom. Healing yourself with a first aid kit. Blah blah blah. Should be avoided most of the time since it's shit. It's shit on every career. All right, let's have a look at the level ten row. Surge of malice. While above ninety percent health, Kirillian gains fifteen percent attack speed. Very consistent boost sustained for heavy weapons. When your permanent health and temporary health is over ninety percent you know, of your Kirillian, maximum I'm health, no you gain fifteen percent attack speed. And thanks to the perks of sustenance of leeching and an abundance of maleficence, so it's very it's easy up. to maintain if this I buff. You, Although in theory, this talent does not provide the same amount of DPS as. <laughs> He shows bounty, but it's very close. And it suits some heavy weapons like the glaive two handed sword better than the other talent. So yeah, uh, it's quite an interesting talent. I, it's one I would really like to play around with. Um, Ethereum's Delight critical strikes make the target bleed. Inconsistent, suited for high crit chance fast weapons. I'd avoid, to be honest. But it says uh, the bleed can be applied to multiple targets by cleaving them and can be applied by both melee and ranged attacks. It lasts 5 seconds and can be stacked up to 5 times. It has a base tick rate of 0 0.75 a second, average tick rate. It is very, it's, it's a very strong damage use, but due to the nature of critical strikes, it is very inconsistent. And may not be applied to the target you want or when you want, especially on single target. Still on a high crit chance fast attack weapon like dual sword, sword and dagger, it can trigger often enough to be kind of a viable pick um i still i don't think i would though but it's good if you pair it with the uh mora hegs doom sight in the level 25 talent and the next one is ishar's bounty gaining permanent health grants five percent power for eight seconds stacks up to three time a strong boost requires picking other talents traits for it to you know for, for con ugh, consistency as a power boost, it increases your damage, stagger, cleave with four stacks. It's the best damage boost skill on this row. However, it requires either necklace trait, natural bond. Ugh. Oh god, I hate natural bond. Or level 25 talent, the pale queen's choosing to be triggered consistently. Natural bond itself can try basically 100% uptime for this talent, but you have the common downside of being unable to heal uh, permanent health. And also it's natural bond. And it's just awful in my opinion i hate it so much though there is though it is slightly reduced by a perk uh and abundance of maleficence the pale queen's choosing requires a bit of micromanagement of your range open but doesn't have other side effects so eh. i would probably go with surge of malice uh level 15 row so smiter uh mainstay and enhanced power it's, it's pretty standard across all builds so smite increases your single target dps should be picked most of the time mainstay increases your horde clear dps however sister thorn already has strong area denial but lacks single target burst so just avoid mainstay go with smiter and enhanced power increases both your melee and range damage however sister of the thorn does not have consistent strong ranged attacks and can already reach breakpoints that easily should be avoided most of the time. So, level 15 row, Smiter. So look at the level 20 row. Oh, oh I'm getting I'm getting parched. I'll have a just have a little smoke. It'll be fine. I'm not watching. And I'm just going to. Subtly mute Ugg on Discord because I can hear him talking in the background. All right, level 20 row. So, uh, incandescence. Radius can stack two times. 
uh, low use case utility it allows you to cast up to three career skills in a short period. However, this talent only starts to work after 120 seconds into the game and requires the player to play very conservatively, which is uh, ineffective in a fast paced game like Vermintide in general. I completely agree. Sister of the Thorn career ability also doesn't have that huge amount of impact to make the conservative play style very good, though, if you can want to save your career skill to only patrols and bosses, and this talent's very powerful, I would avoid it. You want to be using this ability whenever you feel like it. You don't want to have to go, oh, patrols, bosses. No, just use it. Unless you're playing on Cataclysm all the time, I would avoid uh, Incandescence. Um, Hikarati's Cruel Bargain for each elite enemy slain near Kirillian, the cooldown of Radiance decreases by one second. Uh, high use case utility on high difficulty. Basically, an alternative way to charge your career skill allows you to spam it more often. The range of this talent is fairly large, so as long as you're fighting in a team formation, which you should be all the time, I keep telling people, fight as a team. This talent will be triggered consistently, though this talent scales uh, with difficulty greatly, meaning it performs its performance varies depending on the difficulty you're playing. The higher the difficulty is, the more benefit this talent will bring. So, Legend, Kata, really good. Lower level difficulties so good because not so many elites so this might be a decent pick and radiant inheritance consuming one radiance charge uh, grants Krillian vastly increased comet potency for 15 seconds short duration powerful damage boost so during the 15 seconds it increases Krillian's movement speed by 30% attack speed by 20% and power level by 50% and crit chance by 20% and crit power by 40% fuck you yeah, now that's a big old boost. They weren't lying about that. It is an extremely powerful buff, one of the strongest in the game, granting enormous damage boosts against all types of enemies. The only downside is that in order to maximize its efficiency, the player needs to have some ability to predict tough situations like patrol triggers, boss triggers, and since it requires you to have Radiance Charge active at the time you need it. So, oh, I don't know. I, oh, I quite like the sound of um, Radiant Inheritance, to be honest. It's just press F to murder everything and level 25 the pale queen's choosing every 8 seconds Corillian's next range attack consumes no ammo resources and restores 3 permanent health health and ammo sustain uh, the next range attack does not consume ammo or heat but in order to restore permanent health the free range attack needs to hit an enemy fairly strong sustained talent helping range weapons that needs to recharge reload low ammo so moonfire javelin hagbane uh, performs more consistently over the long run the health regen part can also be used to activate the level 10 talent Ishar's Bounty. Though, in that case, it requires some micromanagement. Uh, what's next? Morai Heg's Doom Sight gains three guaranteed critical strikes each time a career skill is used. Whenever, wherever you and your teammates, excluding bots, use a career skill, your next three attacks are guaranteed critical strikes. Although, if your attacks miss, it will consume the stack anyway. A straightforward damage boost. Yeah, I still like the Pale Queen's choosing. Uh, repel. Pushing at full stamina increases the strength of, and range of the push by 100%. Uh, good for crowd control and defensing, you know, all that defensing stuff. Uh, the full stamina push will knock down all trash units and push them quite far away with 10% power versus... It can still... Uh, with 10% power versus, it can interrupt Storm Vermin overhead on Legend of Kata. With 20% power versus it can interrupt Mauler's best score overhead on Legend of Kata. Unfortunately, it still can't one-hit open shields. The downside of this talent is that you might uh, push trash units too far away from you so you can't hit them after the control. So you might end up just pissing trash everywhere. Honestly, I don't think you'd want to... I, I wouldn't use it. I see this as a more of a team support crowd control build. You don't want to be in there. You only really want to be pushing and stuff if you get surrounded. That's my opinion. Uh, the level 30 row. Oh no, a dislike for me. That's sad. Use some abilities. Alright, use some abilities. There you go. Have some abilities. That's that. Yeah, I've made um, it back now. I've made it back. Oh, and Uggy's back. Mm. 
Oh, the stream got upset with me talking. I know the feeling, to be honest. Yeah. So, shall we, we, uh... yeah, should we go and do something? Yeah. Now that you've finished foraging for berries, as I said mm. you were, and the stream mm. didn't believe me, let's go do something with the oh. Do you want to take over the streaming and I'll, um, and then we can like, and then see people can see it from your point of view? Oh uh, yeah, can do. We can pause the stream and just switch over points of view and see if I can actually get it to work this time. Gonna do have to give us a second. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll resume normal broadcasting shortly. Give me a sec. <laughs> 